eat the Japanese way. Doctors say that the traditional diet in Japan and other Asian countries is very healthy. Why is it good for you? In Japan, people don't eat a lot of red meat, butter, or cheese. They eat a lot of rice and fish and fresh fruit and vegetables. This diet is very good for your heart, and people in Japan live longer than in other countries. How to eat like the Japanese? Eat rice with your meals and don't eat a lot of potatoes, especially chips. Eat a lot of fish. Don't eat a lot of meat, for example, steak and hamburgers. Eat fresh fruit and vegetables every day. Drink green tea, not coffee. Eat on small plates. Stop eating when you are full. Eat slowly. Come to Belfast and be inspired. When you are on holiday in the UK, don't forget to visit Belfast. If you like eating out, visiting places of interest, or doing sport or exercise, we have something for everybody. 1. St George's Market. This is one of Belfast's oldest attractions. Here you can try all kinds of different local food, and if you like cooking, you can buy wonderful products to take home. You can also listen to live music. The market is open on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. 2. The Titanic Museum. The museum is situated next to the place where this great ship was made, just 10 minutes from the city centre. You can learn all about the history of the Titanic, from its construction to its tragic end. You can also have lunch at one of the museum's luxury restaurants, which are copies of the restaurants on the Titanic. 3. World Class Golf. Northern Ireland is famous for its golfers, like Rory McElroy and Darren Clark. Belfast has 14 golf courses. The famous courses of Royal County Down and Royal Port Rush are only an hour from Belfast by car. 1. We're waiting for the taxi to arrive and feeling a bit nervous. Our flight's at 4.30. Please hurry, taxi driver. Barcelona, here we come. 2. We're now at the hotel. Our room's great. There's a balcony and a view of the cathedral. I'm taking photos of everything for my blog. 3. Our first dinner. We're having tapas in a bar in the old town near the hotel. I love the parcatala, bread with tomatoes and ham. 4. The tapas were amazing. We're now lying on our bed watching a football match. Barcelona and Real Madrid. Come on, Barca! But Max prefers Madrid. 5. We're in the Picasso Museum, looking at some of his early paintings. Ah, oh, I love them. Then we're going to the beach for lunch. 6. Our last morning. I don't want to go home. Perhaps I can get a job in Barcelona. The Channel. Until 1994, if you wanted to go from London to Paris but you didn't want to fly, you got a train to Dover, then a boat to Calais, and then a train to Paris. The journey was about nine hours. But in 1994, the Channel, or the Channel Tunnel, opened. It is a rail tunnel, 37.9 kilometres long, which goes under the English Channel, 
the sea that separates England from France. Today, you can travel from London to Paris on a Eurostar train, and it only takes about three hours. People first thought of building a tunnel between England and France in 1802, but the project only started in 1988. And it cost four thousand six hundred and fifty million pounds, eighty percent more than the original prediction. Travelling on the Eurostar is usually a very fast and safe way of getting from England to Europe, but in two thousand and nine, it snowed a lot in England and France, and five trains stopped in the middle of the tunnel because the snow caused electrical problems. Two thousand people were in the tunnel for sixteen hours. One point fifty-six. Excuse me, are they free? Yes, please sit down. Thanks. I'm Joe, and I'm Jane. We're from Texas. We're English. I'm Charlie, and I'm Rachel. Nice to meet you. Where are you from in the UK? We're from London. London's a great city. Are you on holiday? Yes, we are. Are you on holiday too? No, we aren't. We're on business. <laughs> are they your children? Yes, they are. Say hello, children. Hello. Hello. Oh, Ryan, Lucy, stop it. Look at the time. Uh, we're late. Yes. Nice to meet you. Have a nice day. Uh, uh, goodbye. Goodbye. One point fifty-eight. Nice photo. Who is he? Adam. He's my brother. Wow. He's very good looking. How old is he? He's twenty-six. Is he married? No, he isn't. Two point twenty-six. Dominic from Bath in the UK. I have breakfast at home. I have cereal, fruit, and yogurt, and I drink espresso coffee with hot milk. I usually have orange juice too. I like my breakfast. I think it's very healthy. Two point twenty-eight. Louisa from Miami in the USA. On Saturdays, my friends and I have a typical American breakfast. We don't have it at home. We go to a restaurant. We eat eggs, potatoes, sausages, and toast, and we drink orange juice and coffee. I don't have a big breakfast during the week. Only toast and coffee. But I really like my breakfast on Saturdays. Ken from Osaka in Japan. In my family, we have a traditional Japanese breakfast. It isn't very different from lunch and dinner. We have rice, fish, and miso soup, and we drink green tea. Today, a lot of Japanese people have a European breakfast, and they don't drink tea. They drink coffee. I prefer our traditional breakfast. Two point thirty-four. One. Welcome on board flight BA six four two to New York. Our flying time today. Do you like the book? Yes, I do. It's very good. She's my favorite writer. I love her books. Do you live in New York? No, I don't. I live in London. My husband and I work for a British company. Oh, do you have children? No, we don't. I have two sons and a daughter. David and Andrew were at university, and Carl is at school. Hmm. Look, here are some photos. That's my day. This is a photo of our holiday in Barbados. <sighs> Do you know Barbados? No, I don't. Hmm. 
Three. Do you want meat, fish, or pasta? Oh, um, a fish, please. Pasta for me, please. Is your pasta nice? It's okay. Um, this fish isn't very good. Excuse me, I don't like this fish. Can I have the pasta, please? I'm sorry, madam. The pasta is finished. Oh. Four. Mm. I need to go to the toilet. Oh. Oops. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Excuse me. What time do we arrive? In 25 minutes, madam. That's good. 2.60 English at work? What do these people have in common? A banker in Mexico City, a barman in a five-star hotel in Moscow, and a worker in the Hitachi Electronics Factory in Tokyo. They all speak English at work. Do you speak English at work? Write and tell us. Marcos. I work in a restaurant in Madrid. I'm a waiter. I speak English at work every day because a lot of tourists come here. I help customers with a menu and I say what the special dishes are. A lot of tourists don't speak Spanish, but they usually speak English. They are very happy because they can talk to me. Charlotte. I'm a receptionist and I work in an office in Paris. It's a multinational company. When people from other countries visit the company, I need to welcome them in English. I also need to answer the phone in English. When we have meetings, we all speak in English because it's the language of the company. 2.70 In ballet, you need to be perfect. Ivan Vasilyev is a Russian ballet dancer. He is the principal dancer with the American Ballet Theatre. I live in a flat in St. Petersburg with my girlfriend. I usually get up at about nine and then I have a shower. In my job, I often stay in hotels. When you have a shower in the morning in a hotel, you can leave your towel on the floor. I love that. I always have a good breakfast, and I love eggs. When I am very hungry, I sometimes eat five. I like sausages, too. Classes start at 10.30. I practice all morning without a break. I sometimes have lunch, but not always. In the afternoon, I practice more. Of course, in ballet, you need to be perfect. Nureyev is my favorite dancer. I have a pair of his ballet shoes. After work, I want to eat. I love meat. My favorite is a big steak. No vegetables, only steak. In the evening, we sometimes go out. Before we go out, my girlfriend looks at my clothes and she usually says, No, Ivan, change. I'm not interested in clothes, but I love watches. I have seven, including a Montblanc, three Rolexes, and a Maurice Lacroix. Sometimes I don't go to bed until one or two. It's often difficult to sleep. I have a lot of things in my head. 3.3. Football isn't the only sport. Football is probably the top sport in the world, but in some countries, other sports are the number one. Iceland. 
Here, the national sport is handball, and they're very good at it. The population is only 300,000, but their men's team is one of the top teams in the world. The sport is also very popular in Denmark, Norway and Sweden. Samoa In this very small Pacific island, rugby is the number one sport and their team usually plays in the World Cup finals. People from this country also often play in Australia, New Zealand and the UK. China Table tennis, or ping pong, is the national sport here and they have the top five men and women players in the world. Other countries that are very good at this sport are Japan, Korea and Germany. Canada Here, people love all winter sports and they always win medals in the Winter Olympics. The favourite sport to watch and to play here is ice hockey. Bhutan In this small country in the Himalayas, archery is the national sport. In competitions, the men play in teams. During a match, the players' wives sing and dance. They want to distract the other teams. 3.32 1. First, I need to pass the theory exam. It's very difficult. I can't answer this question. Can you stop on a motorway? I don't know. 2. Now it's time for the practical lessons. I need a driving instructor. Hello, can I help you? Yes, can I book some driving lessons please? Yes, of course. When can you start? On Monday? Can you come at 8.30? No, I can't, but I can come at 9.30. OK. See you on Monday at 9.30. 3. I have my practical test today. I'm very nervous. Good morning, Ms Taylor. OK. Can you start the car, please? Three point forty three. What do you like doing if you have two free hours? Here are some tweets from people all over the world. Teresa Painting my nails and reading a book until they dry. James I love sitting down with a cup of coffee and reading the newspaper from cover to cover. It's very relaxing. Jerry. During the day, cycling in the country. In the evening, looking at bikes online and thinking about what bike I want to buy. Krisha. It depends. If I'm tired, I love sitting on the sofa and watching one or two episodes of a good series. If I'm not tired, I like making a cake to take to work. Greta Going into the garden and talking to the chickens. Carlos I like walking in the country near my house or going to a bookshop with a friend and having coffee there. Kate After a bad day at work, I like doing housework. It makes me less stressed. Sandra I love going for a walk in the old town and window shopping and then having a cup of hot chocolate in a cafe. David I like going for a run after work. I work in an office all day and I love the feeling of freedom. 3.53 1 Hi, I'm just leaving the house now. 
Me too. I'm walking to the bus stop. Are you getting the bus too? Two. No, I'm not. I'm cycling. See you in twenty minutes. Yes. See you. Three. Where are you? I'm at the cinema, but I can't see you. I'm waiting outside. Sorry, we're in a lot of traffic. There in five minutes. Four. It's really cold outside. I'm going in. I'm arriving at the cinema now. Where are you? Five. I'm standing near the box office. I'm wearing a black jacket. Can you see me? Yes. Can you see me? I'm walking towards you now. Three point fifty-five. Undercover boss. Undercover boss is a TV show where different bosses work undercover. They want to know more about their workers and about problems in their companies. In episode one, David Clark, the boss of a big hotel chain, is working undercover for a week in one of his hotels. He usually works in an office, but today he's working in a hotel. He usually wears a suit, but today he's wearing jeans and a t-shirt. He usually has important meetings, but today he's working in the bedrooms. He usually finishes work at six, but today he's working at eight. Three point fifty-seven. Undercover boss, episode one summary. Monday. David says he's a new worker, and that his name is Andy. The other workers don't know who he really is. Today he's working in the kitchen. He's washing the dishes. The people in the kitchen usually work eighty hours a week. One of the ovens isn't working, but David thinks the food is good. Tuesday. Today he's working in the bedrooms. Next week is a hotel inspection. The workers are repairing things, but only in the rooms for the hotel inspector. They aren't repairing things in the other rooms. David is angry, but he can't say anything. Wednesday. Today, David is working in the restaurant. He's serving breakfast. He's wearing a uniform, a white jacket and a hat. The waiters and waitresses always work very hard. Thursday. David is cleaning rooms. The workers only have a quarter of an hour to clean a room. David is working very hard. He's very tired. At the end of the week, David says, "I'm not Andy." I'm David Clark, your boss. The workers are very surprised. After the program, David changes some things in the company. He gives the good workers more money. Four point twelve. For me, it was a game. In 1988, film director Giuseppe Tonatore was in Sicily, looking for a young boy to be in his next film, Cinema Paradiso. Salvatore Castio was eight years old, with big, dark eyes and a beautiful smile. He was perfect for the role of Toto. He has wonderful memories of making Cinema Paradiso. For me, it was a game. I was the film's mascot. Everybody was sweet to me, and now I feel very proud that I was part of it. Cinema Paradiso was a big success. 
1990, it was the winner of the Oscar for Best Foreign Language Film. Many people say that it is their favorite film of all time. Salvatore was a fantastic actor when he was a child, but now he doesn't act. He says, When you're a child, it's easy. You're just playing. But when you're older, acting is hard work. Today, he has a restaurant in Sicily called L'Oscar dei Sapori, the Oscar for flavor. For Salvatore, Cinema Paradiso is about dreams. People watch great films and forget their problems, and Toto dreams of being a great director. In today's world, the film tells us that we can always dream. 4.23 It changed my life. I loved Uppsala from the beginning. It's a real student city, full of young people. My room was in a student house. I liked it very much. It was small, but comfortable. On my second day, I rented a bike. Everybody travels by bike here. It's great. The other students were very nice. It was easy to make friends from all over the world. And the teachers were fantastic. They helped me a lot. The university was beautiful, with a, a very big library where I studied every day. I needed to work on my final year project. I visited other Swedish cities like Stockholm. I really liked the food. There was a lot of fish, like in Spain, but I missed Spanish omelette. The only thing I didn't like was the weather. I arrived in October and it was very, very cold. In the winter, it snowed a lot and it was dark at four o'clock. Sometimes I was a bit lonely. I missed my family. Uppsala is expensive, but I was very lucky and money wasn't a problem. Ericsson, the Swedish telecommunications company, offered to sponsor my project. It was a great opportunity for me. When my Erasmus year finished, I stayed in Sweden for one more year. Now I'm back in Spain, but I didn't arrive home alone. My Swedish husband, Lars Oka, is with me. Now it's his turn to learn to live in a new country. Being an Erasmus student changed my life completely, in a good way. 4.29 Life in a Day Early in the morning in the USA, a baby opened his eyes and looked at his mother. Isn't he pretty? she asked the camera. <coughs> Around the world, people got up and washed and had breakfast. Sasha, a 15-year-old boy, shaved for the first time. He didn't enjoy it. Ow! A small boy kissed his mother on her birthday. The 24th of July was a Saturday, so a lot of people didn't go to work. They relaxed and went to the park with their family. <coughs> or went shopping. But other people worked hard, or cooked and cleaned. Some children played, but others worked. One small boy cleaned shoes in the street. One woman went to hospital for an operation. Keep going, keep going. Another woman waited all evening to talk to her husband on Skype. He was a soldier, thousands of miles from home. For some people, the 24th of July was a special day. A man arrived in Kathmandu. He was on a cycle trip around the world. 
a woman did an incredible skydive. An unemployed man got his first job. A boy who was at university went home to see his father for the first time in three years. Another man asked his girlfriend to marry him. A man and a woman got married and had an incredible party. <laughs> this beautiful film shows us life around the world in the 21st century. Watch it. It's free on YouTube. 4.40 Strangers on a Train Part 1 I opened my eyes and looked out of the window. I saw a woman on the platform. She was tall and blonde with blue eyes. The train moved and I closed my eyes. It was 6 p.m. and the train was full. Excuse me, can I sit here? I opened my eyes again. It was the tall blonde woman. Sure, I answered. She sat down next to me. There was a nice smell, Chanel number no. 5. I started to listen to music on my phone. I love Chopin. Sorry? I said. You're listening to Chopin. I love classical music. She smiled. Her eyes were very blue. We talked about music until the train arrived at Victoria Station. Would you like a cup of coffee? I asked her. She looked at her watch. Okay she said. I have time. 4.41 Part 2 In Cafe. We sat down. My name's Olivia, she said. I'm David. Nice to meet you. What do you do? I asked. I work in property, flats and houses. What do you do? I work for Citibank. That's interesting, said Olivia. Do you live in London? Yes, I have a flat in Chelsea. Wow, that's an expensive part of London. I looked at my watch. Time to go. I have a tennis lesson this evening. I can drive you home, she said. I live near Chelsea. I told her my address. 4.42 Part 3 Nice car, I said. She was a very fast driver. She stopped outside my flat. We said goodbye and exchanged phone numbers. The next morning, there was a message from Olivia. She wrote, I really want to see you again. Friday? On Friday morning, she phoned me. I have two tickets for a Beethoven concert tonight at the Royal Albert Hall. Can you get them from the box office at 7.15? We can meet in the bar at 7.30. The concert starts at 8.00. 4.43 Part 4 Albert Hall at 7. I got the tickets and I waited in the bar. But Olivia didn't arrive. I looked at my watch. It was 7.45. I looked at my phone. There was a message. Sorry. In a meeting. Leave my ticket at the box office. 
I left her ticket at the box office and went to my seat. The concert started. But Olivia didn't arrive. When the concert finished, I phoned her, but her phone was off. The phone you have called has not responded. I sent her a text. Where are you? I was very angry. I left the concert hall and went home. I opened the door of my flat and turned on the light. <laughs> 